Welcome to an unboxing of, well, you know, some things don't need an introduction. It's the Sony FDR-AX53. Uh, for those who are in the know, uh, this camcorder is very, very hot in demand at the moment. It's very hard to get. Um, I got this amazingly just about. Uh, I've been searching for a couple of weeks to get this because it is uh, kind of in the camcorder sector, which I know is very small now. Uh, but this is, you know, it's one of the best camcorders to come out of this year by Sony. It's many great features. Not only, obviously, is it a 4K camcorder, uh, its optical image stabilisation is, uh, I don't think, nothing comes close to it in the consumer grade. So, uh, I picked this up off Jessup's, which is here in the UK, uh, for £750. Um, I got it via Sony's website, so you can then find a seller, and uh, at the time, even though I've been searching for weeks, I Jessup's must have just got some stock in because uh, there was some available, so I ordered it. Uh, I got it the next day and, and have it had it ever since. Uh, so a bit of background why I want this. Um, obviously I know, obviously the camera I'm recording this off, for example, is an iPhone 6S. produces very, very good uh, image quality and audio, uh, filming it in 4K, so I don't expect anything less. Um, but I don't think you can still um, be a good old-fashioned camcorder. Um, I'm a aviation fan, so I do quite a lot of recording when I'm out uh, in the Midlands, go to the airport and have a look around. Uh, so obviously, behind security fences and that, uh, you want to get as close to the action as possible, and that's where the optical zoom comes into play. Uh, phones don't have that, even though the quality of my phone is fantastic. So I picked this up. Uh, it's got 20 uh, times optical zoom and 30 clear image zoom. Uh, which is more than enough for getting close to the action because I can get relatively close uh, to the runway uh, BHX in Birmingham. Um, but yeah, overall, it's going to be become a lot of useful. I've got a wedding in September, this will be recording uh, along with a GoPro um, and lots of other. I've got a child on the way, which will all these great memories are going to be captured on this, this bad boy. So uh, we're going to have a look around, see what's on the box. This is the box itself, a typical Sony box. It's got the model, it's handy cam range. That's the camcorder itself. On the side, it's got a couple of the key kind of specifications. Uh, one is a, uh, it's got a balanced optical steady shot. So the actual lens mechanism itself moves uh, independently. So if you if you shake quite a lot, then this is gonna help a lot because it actually helps with the balance in there. Uh, we've got 4K, but obviously it works on full HD as well. Uh, that'd be good for me because I don't own a 4K TV, um, but I have a you know a, a 1080p Sony, and you've got a built-in HDMI socket which if you plug it in to a HDMI only TV and it's only full HD, it will scale itself down to produce that image on there, which will still look pin sharp because HD is still fantastic. Got a couple of optional accessories here, so the big battery packs got an extra big battery there. You got a battery independent charger. Uh, so at the moment, uh, to charge this camcorder does come with a power brick and it wires straight into the camcorder. But if you have multiple batteries and you want to be recording non-stop, then this would be a lot more useful because you haven't got to have you know the camera plugged in all the time by a power source. You can independently charge the battery on it, which is good. And you've got a stereo microphone here. I am probably going to get myself a Rode microphone uh, with a windshield on it. Uh, so when I'm at Birmingham Airport, uh, there is obviously a lot of crosswind because the runway is quite elevated. So we need to cut a lot of that sound out. Cool, so on the back, um, just a couple of the key specs here. So obviously you've got a 16 megapixel standalone image because this also takes beautiful 16 by nine aspect ratio images. So you've got 30X 4K zoom and 40X HD zoom and that's clear image zoom. Got a 26.8 mil wide angle lens, which is quite nice. Uh, and obviously got full HD there. Uh, 120 frames per second if you want to do slow-mo and a manual ring which you can use for zoom in or you can use for focus ring that's totally up to yours got the Zeiss uh, I might have said that wrong uh, 
Obviously lens on this is very good quality. Got lots of different things on here. So it's Wi-Fi certified, you've got the NFC logo there. Ustream compatible, so if you want to go direct feed live broadcast, you've got Ustream capabilities. Trilumenous colours, that's for the display. I have a Sony TV, uh, which is the W905, which has a triluminous panel and it is fantastic. Got a full HD logo there. This is the file format it will record in, which is fantastic. Uh, steps memory stick, which I'm still surprised they produce because nobody uses it. SDXC, which is what I have, uh, HDMI, and it has got 5.1 uh, surround sound mic built in. However, this only works on the full HD. Uh, it doesn't work on 4K, sadly, at the moment, but you never know, that might get introduced. Uh, and it works with iMovie and Final Cut Pro, which is good, because that is what I use to video edit. And up to a five hour battery life, uh, but that does say with a different uh, battery by the fit. Uh, on the side, just got the barcode for the camera itself, uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, on the bottom, it does say certain things such as supplied accessories, but AC adapter, power cord, rechargeable battery, micro USB cable uh, for updating the firmware, for example, uh, and also your HDMI cable. Cool, so we're going to dive straight in and have a look. So let's open the beautiful seal from Sony there. Cool, we're in. So. So I've opened Sony products before, so I know how they work. On the top, got some paperwork. So register your product online. Some warranty guarantee information. Some optional accessories, which is always nice to have. So you've got some batteries there, uh, different chargers, some bags, which I've already got a bag for it. Some stereo mics, microphone there, which looks pretty cool. And some tripod. I am going to get this tripod because it's got a remote control built in to the handle which will be very useful when you know obviously trying to track planes and what have you. Uh, camcorder manual, not gonna read that because they're pretty self-explanatory. If I wanted to go all into the manual modes, then I would. Cool, let's have a look at what's inside itself. So let's have a look. So we've got our standard uh, figure of eight power lead there, which is cool. Three pin connection, obviously for the UK mar market. We have got the power brick, as I was saying. So just a standardized Sony power brick, nothing special. Uh, and that's gonna do the job for us. Uh, just seeing if I can make out how much it's gonna put out for us. Oh, so eight volts, 1.7 amp. So that'd be great. It's got a unique connector on the end, so it's not like a standardized connector. It's just for Sony camcorders by the look of it. That's cool. That's for charging it in the box as well. We've got your full-size HDMI to nano HDMI or micro HDMI, whichever one you want to call it. That's nice to have that cable in there because a lot of people give you this. That's really useful for just chucking it straight onto the TV if I'm out and about with just my camera. And here we've got a micro, just a micro USB cable there. That's cool. That's good. That's for updating the firmware, I presume. Um, it resided slightly down here. Is your battery? That's quite a big battery, actually. Yep, yeah, there's your battery. Let's just see if we can make out the information there. There we go. So MP FV70, and that's a 6.8 volt, and that's got uh, 1960 milliamp hours, which is fine. And again, if you wanted an optional accessory, you can buy these extra. Uh, you can tell it's a Sony one because it's got one of the holograms, so I don't buy batteries online. So I know the consequences, what can happen. There you go, Sony hologram. So we know it's genuine. Cool, that's that. And obviously we have the beast itself. So let's just take this out and move the box aside. Cool. So let's take it out. It looks a bit, there you go. Actually a lot bigger than I thought for some reason. I don't know why I was expecting, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I was expecting it to be quite small. But there you go, guys. So straight away, you've got the 4K glamour there. It obviously, they like to advertise where it can record, so it's got 4K capability there. Got some logos down here, so it's just the file format, obviously Wi-Fi, which I'll turn off because I never use it. It's slow transfer speed. I prefer to just take the card out myself. Got your obviously advertising your optical image stabilization there, which is cool, and the fact it's got a wide-angle lens. There we go. We can take this off now. That's for advertising in a retail store. Um, that's good, it's just glued on, so we just take that off carefully. There we go. It's got the Sony brand there. 
Obviously on the top here guys, we've got a couple of things. Obviously we've got the zoom toggle there. So that's obviously zoom, it goes to the left, that's the zoom back in. Uh, and the zoom to the right, that's where it zooms out. Got your photo mode there to take photos on the go. Here's a cover. You take this off and there's your hot shoe. That's where I'll be putting my road camera. It's a shame this doesn't come off, um, but I presume it's to protect this mechanism here uh, because my microphone will live. Mind you, actually, that's, that's quite good because I'll be taking the microphone off when it goes back in the bag. So we can protect that by literally just covering it back. There we go. Here on the top is your 5.1 surround sound mic, which is pretty cool. So this accepts, uh, obviously, audio from front, left and right, back, and obviously centre there. That's really cool. Obviously, there's the lens cover itself. It says wide 20 optical zoom, and there's so many brand there. Here, we've got a ring which moves. It's very, very, very nice ring, actually. It feels very smooth. Yeah, obviously, very highly built, which I would expect for the price. Got a manual button here, which you can map to either control the zoom, uh, focus, exposure, etc., etc. You can map that within the menu system. On the side here, we've got obviously your hand strap there. Bottom right, we've got what looks like a yep headphone port if you want to listen directly to your feed, which is pretty cool. Obviously, here is where the NFC chip will lie underneath here. Obviously, here, open that. We've got your microphone in, so that's where my Rode mic will go in, and a multiple interface, so it says there, but that's micro USB. That'll be things like well, anything you want really. That'll be where, when I get my tripod with the controls built in, that's where it's going to plug in. So these flaps nicely cover up. Cool. Obviously on the back here, this is where your battery is going to go. So I'll pop that in just now. Literally a case of popping it in. It kind of slots in. Push it up and it clicks into place. And there we go. Obviously you've got your main record button here. Down here you've got the DC in. So that's good. That's where your power lead goes in if you want a direct charge. Or film whilst on charge, it's not a problem. This pops out, you pull it out, you can hear the lens just open up there, and then up. Uh, and that it will, it can just sit as a picture on the screen there. Um, there is a little cog here where you can sort out your focus, so the focus in that little screen there, the viewfinder, to match whatever you're comfortable with. You know it's on because there's a green light. Put that back away. So obviously as soon as I retract this thing at the back and there we go, we can see obviously the lens itself. Now I don't know if it's very easy to see, but you can see me just moving this, how still the lens itself stays. And this is the balanced optical steady zoom. You can see I'm moving it left and right and center. Got the shakes and it's still staying very, very still. Now normally that would move along with the camera, but as you can see, it's trying very hard to stay focused and in the middle. So that's one of the biggest selling points of this camcorder is the fact it's got this. Because when you have it in your hand as a handheld device, obviously we shake. Uh, so the fact this stays as still as possible really does help. And I'll show you some results later on. I'll pop that back in there. As soon as you push that back in, it opens. Obviously we do have a screen as well, so I'll just open that up. Obviously you've got the screen itself uh, and that will obviously display, it's very hard to show you in the light but obviously has different menu settings as well which I'll show you later on. Uh, obviously on the bottom, nothing much, obviously it's got the camcorder model and your serial number there uh, but obviously we have got your tripod mount which is very important as well. Um, so yeah, obviously your battery, push that in and that allows your battery to come out. And guys, that's pretty much it so far of the Sony. That's the overlook of the device itself. Now I'm going to go out and get some footage, but I just wanted to show you a little bit more. Uh, obviously in here, uh, this is where we've got some controls here. So obviously we've got Dolby Digital 5.1 surround sound there. Uh, we've also got a little button here, which cuts the audio from somebody who's talking behind the camera, for example. Um, got your play button there, see so you all your media you've recorded. Night shot, so this actually puts a green tint on the images as well. And you've got your power button here. Here we've got your slot for your memory card or your SD card. And another little flap here, which is where your HDMI socket is. Um, got some little speakers built in there for the menu system, which I turn off because I can't stand it. Um, so we're going to try and get some recording footage. It's a beautiful day outside, so this should go really well. Thank you. 
Now, I would like to say I apologise uh, as this helicopter did catch me very quickly. It was coming over at a very quick speed, so it was quite hard to track in the air. So I did catch it, and as you can see, it was a very quick helicopter over Sidmouth. I managed to catch it just in time uh, and keep it on track. Now, Intelligent Auto was off at this point, so this is me. Uh, it doesn't adapt to the surrounding, it just focuses on the object that I am pointing it towards. Um, as you can see, with a 20 optical zoom, it is more than enough to capture the flying object in the air as it goes over towards Seaton there, East Devon. So after that bit of action, we're now looking at the east side of Sidmouth. Uh, so this is where it's the Esplanade, and this is over to the centre there, uh, is what's called Jacob's Ladder. Uh, but this big cliff you're looking at here is called Peak Hill. Um, and this is a very nice spot if you get on top of there, you get a beautiful view over Sidmouth. You can see a couple of the sea defences there to help keep Sidmouth alive and not being battered all the time. Uh, joined very nicely by some seagulls which were very uh, not camera shy in this case and they're more than happy to keep uh, keep still for us. Now as you can see with Intelligent Auto Off, the camera, uh, I could have manually done it, was focusing on the foreground there so as you can see some seagull poo and <laughs> the railings in the background but keeping it pin sharp it may also be because I was about a meter away from this seagull so I probably zoomed in too much for it to focus because it is so clear uh, so close to, but as we zoom out uh, it gets pin sharp and focuses on the seagull itself um, so that was one what was standing right by me as you can see I'm right by the railings so very very close a uh, bit of a dog argument happening over here we managed to capture that very uh, you can pick up the sound as well because that was about seven meters or so away from me but the speakers there the built-in microphone does pick up very very well as you can see zoom in you can just pick, pick up the victoria hotel in the background and the english flag uh, and panning across there to the walkway which stretches all the way around the jacob's ladder which is behind those cliffs there and there's people there enjoying the summer summer sun here in england people up there on the cliff it's very rare we get very nice weather, but today we chose a very, very good day for some 4K recording. So, we're going to have a look to the left now, panning over, you can just see a seagull just flew right by me. Just zooming out there to the sea defence where another light beacon is. Make sure, because we, we do get a lot of, well, not a lot, but we get a fair few shipping boats, which you can see there's one in the background now on the left. And in the summertime there is a boat which takes tourists along to Exmouth which is the next kind of big town on the south coast here in De uh, East Devon. So zooming out we can see the wide angle lens there picking up. You can see the different colours in the sea um, and that's just what happens because we've got quite a lot of cliffs come down in recent time unfortunately. So what we're going to do we're going to pan to the left now onto this sea defence where we have a very uh, camera happy seagull which stood still very uh, still very close for us we've got some macro 4k recording so you can see guys uh, this footage really blows me away because it looks fantastic we can see the seagull there in 4k um, everything's blurred in the background which is fantastic we've got some fantastic uh, detail this camera really picks up from the feet up to the seagull's fur uh, i was literally stood about 1.5 meters away from this uh, this creature and he, he stayed still for us which is very nice of him and you can see the detail it picks up is fantastic. I am holding this camera on my own with no, so I'm not leaning on the rails. I am literally holding it freehand with my right hand. As you can see, the optical, you know, the optical stabilization really does do it justice. Look at it, it's so still. And bearing in mind, I'm zoomed full here, you know, I'm zoomed fully in here. When you zoom in all the way, that's when you really notice the shake. Um, but as you can see the camera Sony what have they done with this camera really is credit to them because it is pin sharp um, thankfully this seagull stood for, with us for quite a while so I was able to get some zoom in shots and zoom out shots you can see straight through his beak into the sea there where he's got a hole all the way through and the, the beautiful colours that he has on his beak there and they're very very clean animals uh, seagulls would like to call it out uh, so here we have uh, his friend or his partner, or whatever it could be, having a little bit of a drink there. Now, uh, I did zoom in all the way, which was probably a mistake, because as you can see, it's not as pin sharp, and that's because I'm just too close to it there. Uh, but as you can see, they're having a bit of a bathe and a, and a drink. I managed to get both of them drinking there. 
can the clear rocks in the background there are so so pin sharp um, and as I say they're just enjoying the sun um, and I'll leave you to enjoy this shot now because I will go back to get some close footage of the seagull's head So we're capturing the St George's flag, that's an English flag for England as it is St George's now today. Uh, blown in the wing and unfortunately against a white cloud but it coped well. And just outside here, the lifeboat station within Sidmouth, which is cool. Okay, so we're looking at the moment on a piece of Sidmouth called the Ham. Uh, so this is quite popular for dogs uh, because this section of the beach they are allowed to go on. And so as you can see, we've, uh, we've fully zoomed in here. Uh, focus on that Labrador there with the stick with the owner to the left and um, we've got the transition of the dog coming out of the water onto the beach um, and as I said this is me completely uh, freehand there's no tripod involved as you can see the optical stabilisation is absolutely fantastic it's more than capable of coping uh, so here's me panning back out to get the over the cliff view there so there's the walkway and you can see the cliffs in the background there which we'll go over to now so we're at the same spot, uh, but this time we're going to we're going to pan out towards the ocean there. Um, so here you can see the sea defences here, the rocks. At the end there is a light, uh, which obviously goes up in the night to prevent people from crashing into Sidmouth. Uh, and as you can see, the two uh, colour tones in the sea there, blue to the brown there, where it's hitting the coast. And the reason why you get that brown effect is as we pan to the left, you'll see there's a bit of a cliff fall at the moment in Sidmouth. Uh, we got uh, hit by quite a bad storm the other week. So you get a lot of the deposits from that, the clay going back into the sea. And that's why on a, a you know, relatively wavy day there's quite a lot of colour gain. Uh, but this is a pan up the coast uh, towards Beer and Seaton. As you can see you can get the cliffs full in view there. It curves no problem at all. Uh, we did actually hit the shade at the moment where the sun went in. You can see it still looks pin sharp. Uh, what we're going to do now is going to go over to that far side, panning down towards the Sydney Seagulls. So here we are, this is where the seagulls tend to like to gather. Uh, so this is at the foot of the river, uh, the river Sid, and this is obviously where it meets the sea. Uh, so this is where they come to bathe and try and catch some fish, uh, but they're never normally successful. Well, this is where they all gather, they all just kind of hang out here together. Normally quite a large quantity of seagulls, but as you can see, there's not many today. Uh, panning up the coast, there you can see the terrain you can expect on the sea seafront. So quite large rocks. Along with cliff faults, which are sadly uh, quite a common occurrence when it's been a bit of a storm. Uh, so you've got some lovely white rocks there. Uh, you can walk up all the way along that seafront uh, when the tide is out, all the way to the other side there. Uh, but at the moment, with the tide in, uh, you would be you know, risking your life because there is quite a lot of uh, rock falls on this Sidmouth 
Uh, there is a coastal path as well. You can walk across uh, to all the way to Seaton, all the way back to Exmouth. As you can see at the moment, I'm just testing the panning capabilities of the camera, along with the zoom in and zoom out. Um, so you can see some wires there where the cliff was, people's back gardens, and then obviously the sea has taken that away. So what we're going to do now, we're going to quickly pan down and have a look at the river, where the river meets the sea. Uh, so you can see this little kind of gully it's created over time. This again fluctuates throughout the day, and the tide is in. This area is completely covered with the sea and the river. But as you can see, this time of day it forges itself an alley to kind of get to the sea. Um, and this is the delta as it forms. Um, so as I say, the seagulls tend to have a bit of a play around here. Um, and the far distance there, uh, you can see that next kind of grove is, uh, a, is a beach, quite a nice beach. You can go all along there. Uh, and in the far distance where the next bit of green is, is Seaton, the next town along the Jurassic coast there. And as you see, the camera copes very quick with zooming in and out very quickly. We can see some young seagulls there as well uh, with their parents and just chilling in the lovely British summertime. Um, so that's kind of the last few guys. The next bit of clip is going to be a time lapse which I've done. Hopefully that turns out very nicely as well.